Good morning. So today I wanted to talk about microphones and how we hear sound. And so we're going to be dealing with sort of the different types of microphones and how you need to have sort of the right microphones for the right um, audio that you are doing. So when we're dealing with sound, sound is basically a vibration of air. So um, normally if we are face to face as I'm talking to you, my vocal cords are creating vibrations and pulses in air as they travel to you. They go into your ear, travel down your ear canal, and then they bounce off of your middle ear and your eardrum. And with the nerves inside these um, parts, your brain is able to uh, translate these vibrations into sound that you hear. In this case, this is sounds that is my voice. Well, a microphone works the same way, or pretty similar at least. Sounds and vibrations are passed through to um, a, a filter in the microphone known as a diaphragm, which is just a narrow filament that can pulse and detect vibrations. Then there's some sensors and chips that are attached to the diaphragm that are able to save those vibrations as a audio signal then that audio signal gets passed through the microphone cable or through a wireless transmitter and it is then saved into a format to where it can be reproduced in another order so when we're dealing with microphones we're going to be talking about two main types of microphones those are going to be dynamic and condenser so dynamic is uh, kind of the old school microphones that have been around for quite a time, uh, quite a while. They do not require any extra power. There's not a whole lot of advanced circuitry or um, electronics inside, which has also made these microphones very rugged and uh, dependable. And a lot of uh, basic news mics like this one in the upper corner are very sturdy. And I've actually seen people like take them and use them as hammers to kind of fix something in place. Now, that being said, do not use a microphone as a hammer. You will eventually break it, so you don't want to do that. Now, with the dynamic microphones, they are um, very rugged, but they give up the ability to be extremely sensitive um, for their durability. So with the dynamic microphone, you're going to want to keep a microphone very close to your audio source. If it's going to be um, me as like one person talking or if I'm getting an interview, I'm going to have to move the microphone closer to the person that I'm talking to to get uh, good audio from them. So they must be extremely close to the source of the sound. So if you look at uh, these pictures, you can kind of see that we do have a lot of dynamic microphones that are coming into place. Uh, if I've got a reporter that's talking to the camera during a stand-up, you can kind of see the microphone is very close to him. During these other three, which are press conferences, the microphones are all set up in, on stands and they are put very close to the speaker's face so they're able to get uh, good audio, as opposed to another type of microphone which you could set further back and it could pick up a little bit better. Now, the other type of microphone is what's known as a condenser microphone. And these are um, a little bit more powerful. They're going to have more electronics and circuitry and computer chips inside of them to help them record audio. And because of this, they require phantom. And this comes as a, uh, either can either be a battery inside of the microphone, or you can run a low level voltage through the microphone cable back into the microphone itself from your camera recording device. And this is known as phantom power. And this is what is supplying audio to these microphones. Now with condensers, these are a lot more sensitive in that the way they're designed, they pick up the human voice more naturally so if you listen to the audio of a condenser versus a dynamic you're going to hear the dynamic maybe like a little muffled a little distant but with the condenser it's going to better record and replicate the human voice or whatever sound it's listening to and so these pick up things a lot better now because they have these extra components that means they break a lot easier so you don't really see condenser or you don't can see condenser mics being used out in the public for electronic news gathering for news gathering you're probably going to be seeing um the dynamic microphones but in the uh, upper right corner we have a group of people recording a podcast and they all have like condenser mics again right in front of their face that's kind of um, recording the audio but when you do the playback the audio sounds a lot better so whenever our students at trojan vision are recording their voice for a news story they actually use this little uh microphone 
uh, down here. This is a USB condenser microphone. Likewise, I'm using a uh, USB condenser microphone myself. Hopefully that's not too loud as I put it down. And so having these condenser mics uh, do give the ability to better record your voice. So for like news and ENG, we tend to take the dynamic microphones out to get interviews on the street. And then when we come back and the reporters can record their voice, they're going to be using the condenser mic to get that. Now, depending on what type of microphone you need, um, you, a microphone has the ability to pick up sound in different directions and in different ways. And the best way to tell what a microphone can do is by looking at what's called a pickup pattern. And so one type of pattern is what's known as a cardioid. And that's gonna be this uh, screen in the bottom left. You have a pattern that looks like an upside down heart shape. And this is designed as a way to tell you that most of the audio is going to come from the front of the microphone so if i'm holding on to the back of something um so if i'm holding like this pin and so this is telling me that all the audio is going to happen on the front not really going to pick up on the back now if i look to the right of that we get what's called a omnidirectional microphone, which means the audio is going to get picked up all the way around so if i have this microphone turned right side up or if I have it turned upside down it's still going to pick up audio and it's going to pick it up relatively well and so with omnidirectional these are good if you want to pick up a lot of natural sound and things that are going on around you I've also seen um, omnidirectional microphones used for like video conferencing or audio conference calls where they may put it in the middle of the table so it can pick up everybody's voice whereas if I'm doing something like a podcast or I want to uh, do just a, an interview and I don't want a lot of the side and side noise being picked up then we'll probably do like a cardioid so uh, when we have our anchors in the studio and they are using um, these little lavalier microphones that will clip there these lavaliers um, can come in a variety of pickup patterns a lot of them in general come up as an omnidirectional so if they're talking their voice is getting captured whether it's straight up or whether it's upside down so omnidirectional has a good use especially in new studios so depending on what you need for your microphone um, consider the pickup pattern that you're going to be uh, working with do you want to do something that's cardioid and when they say cardioid they basically uh cardioid comes from uh, cardio which means heart and you kind of see this is an upside down heart shape so that's where we get cardioid um, whereas omnidirectional omni means all so it's all directional so those are kind of two of the main pickup patterns that you're going to need uh are you going to be using when you're when you're trying to figure out which audio works best and i'll talk a little bit later about other types of microphones and their specialized pick up patterns.